welcome back. This is Allison. We are going to make some fun cards today using Concord and Ninth products. And one of these cards is going to be a really simple easel card. So today we're going to be using the Whimsical Wings bundle from Concord and Ninth. Now, they sell these products separately, but they also sell them in a bundle at a discount. The bundle isn't always available, but when it is, it's nice. So there's a die set, a stamp set, and a stencil pack. And we're going to be using all three for the cards today. So let's get started. First, as far as stenciling, um, layers stencils, I love to use this stencil mat from Waffle Flower. As you can see, the stencil just tucks right into the corner. And so that way you know that when you put the subsequent stencils in, they're going to be in the exact same place. Now this stencil, I'm kind of pointing it out here, it's hard to see. It has little marks for an A2 panel. So I'm lining my paper up with those marks. And then I'm going to put the stencil where I want it and the paper where I want it. And then I'm going to tack the paper down with some tape. Really easy. Now the only thing I'm about the tape in the corner is I need to make sure it's not overlapping where the stencil design is going to be. And now we're ready to go. We're going to be using Pink Fresh inks today. I think I used all of these inks except the darker purple. So for the first stencil, we're going to use the green. By the way, that's shelf liner. It just keeps my ink pad in place. I got that idea from Tim Holtz. I know that other people have some fancy ink pad holders. I don't have those. All right, so this is the Meadow ink from Pink Fresh, and we're just gonna ink up this first layer. And by the way, I speed through a lot of this because I would assume it's kind of boring watching me stencil, but please leave a comment and let me know if you're okay with the speed if you'd rather me slow down. I think there's a way to adjust the speed on YouTube. I've never done that personally, but just let me know. Um, okay, so nothing magical here, but after I'm done, I'm gonna come back in with this little detail brush and I'm gonna just shade in the bottom of those flowers just to give it a little bit of dimension. These are probably the biggest images on the stencil, so that's why I, I gave those some dimension and not really worried about the smaller images. So here we're coming in with the third stencil and we're gonna do that with orange. Now there are some spots on this last stencil on the flowers that are really tiny. So I'm coming in with this tiny waffle flower brush and I'm gonna do those in the blue color, the sapphire ink. It makes it really easy. You don't have to mask off areas because the brush is so small. You don't need to worry about running into other areas of the stencil. All right, so once I lift that up, we're done with that design. And the empty space there's where the butterfly is gonna go. Next, we're gonna work on the second card. Now, what I've done is I've taped an A2 card, a top folding card to my stencil mat. And I've used that purple Altenew tape to do that. I've taped it upside down so that again my stencils can fit up in that corner. Now I do have a big waffle flower media mat that I could have pulled out. I didn't feel like it. They also make a bigger stencil mat. But I find that I, I get most stuff done with just a smaller stencil mat. Now for this first stencil, we're now stenciling the interior part. There's three sets of stencils that we already did for the exterior. Now there's three that do the interior. I'm masking off part of this first stencil because I'm gonna do it three different colors on this first stencil. So I'm using the sapphire ink for the first part. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna clean off the stencil and come back in and then we're gonna mask that blue part off so that we can then do those nearby leaves in green. It's really easy to mask off stencil areas with tape. Any tape you have, washi tape, easy C tape, 
whatever you have. All right, so we're going to use the meadow green ink. And then for the last color, we don't really even need to mask because they're not they're not too close. And we're going to do that in orange. And then we'll be ready for the second stencil. Now the second stencil, I'm just going to do all of it in that purple color. I think it's pale lilac. And then we're going to come in with that small shading brush again and just add some shading. And I think we're on the last stencil now. We're going to do that all in orange. There may be some areas I can't remember with the blue. Yep, there's some tiny areas again on this stencil where we're going to come in with the sapphire. Now, you'll see on the final design, you're not going to really see a lot of this interior part because this is what's going to end up being the panel for the um, easel card. But you will see some of it. All right, there's the finished product. I think it's really pretty just on its own. You don't even have to put a butterfly in the middle. Just use that as a card. Time to work on our butterflies. All right, so this, the top part of the butterfly, you can, I, I don't know if you can tell, the stamp is kind of flexible. So when I have flexible stamps like that, I like to put the die down first and then fit the stamp into the die. And that way I know that once I finish stamping, it's going to die cut out perfectly. If I just kind of put the stamp down, it could go wonky. And then when it comes time to die cut it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't match up. All right, this is a pretty solid stamp. So you'll see me coming in and rubbing those stamps because I haven't used them before just to make sure they'll do a clean stamping. Now, some of these layers I stamped once, some of them I stamped twice. The blue layer, I think I stamped once. I didn't want to stamp it again because I didn't want it to be darker. It's not a perfect stamping. I don't, I didn't really care. I kind of liked it. These are, after all, called whimsical wings. All right, so now I'm just stamping these interior parts. I'm going to stamp the flowers in purple. And I think I stamped these maybe two, maybe even three times. All right, it's time for the bottom layer of the butterfly, and I'm going to stamp that in orange. And again, I stamped it once, but I think part of one wing, I had to re-stamp just part of it. And then just like the top part, we're going to stamp the details. The leaves are going to be in green, and again, the flowers will be in purple. It's really easy to line these up. Having said that, did I line them up completely perfectly? No, but that's okay. Again, they're supposed to be whimsical. I forget if it's Jennifer McGuire who who always says this is handmade, not Hallmark. So if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. All right, there's two little hearts, I think, on those wings that I stamped in the sapphire blue. And now we're going to stamp the body. I'm sure there's a technical name for the body, but I always call this the body of the butterfly. So now we're coming in with our dies, and we're going to cut all of this out. And you'll see when we cut it out that that top, the top blue wings, it dot, it cuts so there's this white space at the bottom, and that makes it easy to line the two parts up. Now I'm coming in and stamping the lower parts, and you'll see I'm not going to waste my paper. If you've seen any of my other videos, I don't like wasting paper, so I'm going to get my last use out of that white scrap. All right, so now I'm assembling, and I'm using Barely Art Glue. And you'll see how simple it is to assemble these butterflies. So that's the white space I was talking about. So you know exactly where to line up the two halves of the butterfly. For the body, I am just beefing it up with one layer of white cardstock. You could put more just to make a little more dimension if you want. All right, so now we are going to go back to the easel card and we're going to create the easel. 
And remember, we have an A2 card base, which is five and a half tall. So we're going to score it halfway down at two and three quarters. I'm sorry. Yes, two and three quarters. And here I'm just reinforcing the folds with my bone folder. So there's what the easel is going to look like. Now we're going to go back to the other card. This is where we're going to have die cut pieces. For the easel card, we stamped our design. And now for this card, we're just going to use the die cuts. So you can die cut from colored cardstock, or you can do what I'm doing here, which is coloring your own cardstock. Just cut everything from white and use your inks. So that's what I'm doing here. Now you will see later that I'm going to change my mind, but that's okay. We're running through the process here, just so you see. There are these dies that cut kind of a stitched design into the wings. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to run those through my die cut machine. All right, so here's what I was saying before. You can cut the dies from just plain old colored cardstock. So that's what we have here. And I was trying to match up the two cards. I wanted the blue on the top and the orange on the bottom, or so I thought. So here's what I had just done where I colored my own white cardstock. And I liked that better than the colored cardstock. I just didn't have the right colors of cardstock. But I still didn't love it. So I ended up cutting a top piece out of the lavender, or out of white, and I colored it with the pale purple ink. And I really like this a lot better. So that's what we're going to go with. But the wings look kind of flat. It has that texture from the stitching in it, but I'm going to go ahead and use the stamps from the stamp set to create more texture and depth. So on the orange wings, I'm going to use the orange ink. And we're just going to stamp that on. Now, you can also die cut those little flowers, which is what you see here. You can do that. But I decided to just stick with the, stink the stamping. And here I'm coming in with the purple. And again, I'm going to use purple to stamp these flowers. Now, there are leaves that are stitched on this little design. I did not stamp those, but we're going to come back to that later. I at first, I wasn't sure if the stamps lined up, but again, come back to that later. Here we are just finishing up the orange. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating even more texture and depth to these wings. I am just inking up the sides a little bit darker because, again, I, I thought they just looked kind of flat. So I'm using my small detail brush again. And I'm just inking around the sides. And then I'm going to come in a little heavier in some places. And, you know, even some of it might look a little splotchy, but that I was kind of actually going for that. Butterflies are not perfect. None of us are. All right, the purple wings, I actually used the blue sapphire ink, and I think it turned out really pretty. I love how much it transformed this flat looking wing. So here I am just adding more to the sides. And then we're just going to ink up the bodies. And look how easy it is just to put die cuts on that stencil mat and they kind of stay in place so it makes it easy to ink blend. So here we are assembling the butterfly. It's the same as assembling the stamp butterfly. And here I'm just making sure it all looks good before I glue it together. And then we'll put the body on. And I believe I, I did double up that body as well. So now to decorate the front of this card, I stamped a sentiment from the stamp set, and then I'm going to come in, there's a matching die from the die set. And the cool thing about this die, it has a little arrow at the top to let you know which 
which side is the top. Otherwise, you might be flipping it over and over just to figure out if you have it right. So it just makes it a lot easier to die cut. I really appreciate when companies do that. So now it's time to just glue our panel to an A2 card base. And then here I am attaching the butterfly to the card base. I believe I used some thin foam tape for that. And now I'm doubling up that little banner sentiment. And then because I had beefed up that the blue middle, the body of the butterfly, that sentiment is going to be straddling it. So I need to add foam tape on the sides. And I'm going to use my little thin foam squares to do that. So I'm just going to put one on each side. And there I'm just making sure that it sits properly, which it does. So we're just going to attach it. And then this card is pretty much done. So now we're going to go back to the other card. Oh, I lied. Sorry. <laughs> we're going to add a few embellishments. So I zoomed in so you could see there's little stitched circles in the design. And that's where I'm going to add these little pearls. And to do that, I'm going to use my Gina K Connect glue. Now I'm running low on this glue, I need to get more, but I do use this glue when I'm gluing embellishments. Um, somebody had said that they didn't trust their Barely Art glue to glue on embellishments. Now I have not personally encountered any problems with it, but I just am paranoid now. So um, I mean, I have several types of glue, so I just use this glue for embellishments. And I do need to get more of it just to use for every day as well. All right, here I put them side to side, and I've decided I, I don't like the lavender on the bottom or on the body of this butterfly. It wasn't standing out from the design enough. So I want to replace it with the blue. So now you're going to see me dismantling this card which we all do it, right? It's not a big deal. Nobody's going to know. And then I'm going to glue on the blue pieces and it will be like it never happened. So here I am coming in back with my Barely Art glue. And then I'm just going to tape that blue body on top of the purple one that's already there. And then you'll see that it just stands out a lot more. There's all those pale lavender flowers on the card base. And I think this just makes the butterfly stand out a lot more. So here I am holding it up to the card just to see how the mechanism is going to look. And you can see why I stenciled that interior design on this card. Because you don't often look at the back of an easel card, but just in case you do see it, I wanted that design there. And here I'm just beefing up the top of the butterfly just to give it a little bit more stability since that's the part that's going to be hanging off when the easel is propped up. And speaking of propping it up, you need something to do that. So I'm going to use this sentiment from Birch Press Design. I love these sugar script dies from Birch Press. Now I had cut it out of a green cardstock, but again, it wasn't the right color. So I cut it out again from white and I'm going to color it with the same meadow ink that I used on the card base. Now I won't throw out that other green piece that I cut out. I'm going to use that to layer these up because you do need dimension so that the easel can prop up against something thick enough. And even after that, I'm going to come back in with another layer of just plain white. And I'm going to put that behind. So now these are stacked three tall. Now for another a sub sentiment, I'm going to use this set from Pink Fresh Studio. And here I'm just coming in, trying to figure out where everything needs to be so that my butterfly stands up well. 
So I'm just positioning everything before I stamp that sentiment. Now before I believe I used my mini Misty, I pulled out my my regular size Misty for this just because I have that big card base. And I'm stamping with the sapphire blue ink. Now normally I would put two layers of this white part, this interior part of the word die, but that's not really where I need the dimension. I just needed the dimension on the shadow layer. So I just have one layer of that white hello. All right, so now it's time to glue. And when I do that, I'm going to pull my T-square out just to make sure everything's level. I need that H and the L's to be level so that when you prop the easel, it's going to be sitting against a level area. And now we can glue on our butterfly. And we are almost done. Now I'm just reinforcing the score lines and we're going to glue on the butterfly. Look how pretty that is. I am just in love with this set of products. And I love how you can do the die cuts or the stamping or a combination. So here's what the easel looks like. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love how you can see the overall design behind the butterfly. And now I'm going to pull in the other cards so you can see them side by side. And we're going to come back to what I was talking about with the purple flowers on the card on the left, what I'm going to call the flat card. Now I did not stamp those because I, I was having problems lining up those leaves, but I thought it looked kind of flat. So you'll see in my final card, I did come back in with that purple ink and I did ink up those leaves they don't match up exactly but I don't think you can tell and I'm really happy with how these cards turned out I think they're so fun I love the easel card I think the butterfly is perfect thank you so much for joining me today be sure to like and subscribe I really appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you next time bye bye